Hello, fellow safety and health professional, and welcome to another podcast and a long series of podcasts based on an article in Safety and Health magazine that's all about you. No man is an island. That profound phrase is still as true today as it was when John Doan, a renowned 17th century English poet, published it. It tells a powerful truth. Everyone needs others to survive and thrive. Now just think about the food you eat. There's no way you could have a banana or soup or anything you have that you eat if somebody else didn't work to grow it, package it, ship it, stock it, sell it. I mean, the list is incredible of what it takes for you to have your morning coffee even. And so we need other people. Even as work we do as safety and health pros, we couldn't be successful at what we do if we didn't have the cooperation and collaboration of other people. So when humans work together, uh, we can accomplish fantastic things. That's why teams can be so effective. They are the epitome of humans cooperating to reach common goals and solve problems. You undoubtedly have been a team member at work or in your community. Uh, For me, for example, I'm a demolition team member at a decommissioned nuclear facility. There's a group of about 11 of us uh, that work for this one building we're demolishing. Now, I cherish every chance I get to contribute to the team's success. And I work hard to be an excellent member who helps the team excel. And here are a few ways I accomplish that, particularly during our team meetings, because that's mostly the most common time that your team is together when you have a meeting or a pre-job briefing or something like that. And I want to share them with you, uh, not to brag about what I'm doing, but just to say that these have helped me a lot, and I hope that they will help you. And maybe you're doing some of them already. It's not about you. There is no I in team. Uh, No doubt you've heard that before. That's something I've heard for years, right? Uh, Though it's overused, it's still, it's valuable to consider what it really means. It means that your ideas, contributions, and what you do shouldn't be just to like show off or make you stand out or make it, you know, stroke your ego type thing. That's not what it's, what you should be doing that. That shouldn't be your main motive. So like when I suggest something and the team agrees, great, makes me feel good, happy that they said, yeah, Hawk, your idea was good and we're going to use it. Uh, Then the team usually moves on, you know, we go to the next item. However, if the team decides not to use my idea, I don't pout about it, uh, don't feel insulted or waste time arguing my point. Even if the concept is excellent, and of course, in my mind, I'm sure it's better than what the team plans to do. Still, I will not advance the team's, it will not advance the team's interest by me being stubborn and creating discord. That doesn't mean you shouldn't give more evidence, perhaps, to prove your idea is viable when it's turned down. For example, some team members may not fully understand what you are proposing. So this this is where you got to have your ducks together, as they say so that you can, you know, explain why this is a good idea. Because maybe people don't realize why it's a good idea. But if after that they say, nope, still, then I'm fine, give it up. Too often I've seen teams argue for an entire meeting, sometimes more than one meeting, because a team member is stubborn about an idea they have and they want to, you know, not give it up. It's counterproductive. So I don't engage in in that distressing behavior. Now, after the meeting, I might go and complain to somebody, right? That's different. All right. Give team members your full attention. Oh, my goodness. I still see that all the time in in teams. The team I'm on now, pretty good. There still is a few people that don't pay attention like they should, but I I just think it's their natural way. All right. Whatever I – here's what I do. Whoever is talking during a team meeting will get my full attention. That includes facing the person speaking, making steady eye contact, taking brief notes when needed, and asking questions about what they're describing when I don't understand something or would like more information. I realize that looking at my phone or away from a team member while they're talking is not polite and can make the person feel like I don't care about what they're saying. And finally, the last big point, 
which has been around since the 80s, I remember when I first started really going to meetings. Be on time and come to the meetings with a positive, and I would like to say, uplifting attitude. Arriving on time shows you value the team meeting. That's part of what it does. So I'm always early for the team briefings. Often I'm the first one there, but most of the time, except for this one guy, Sean, he comes earlier than me on purpose because he knows I come early, <laughs> which is kind of funny. We're good friends too. I have a coffee cup in hand. I look forward to usually being the first in the room if I beat Sean uh, so I can write an inspiring saying on one of our whiteboards. We have like five whiteboards in our briefing room. Sometimes the phrases are serious or profound, like the one I started this article with, you know, no man is an island. But I like to also include like inspiring sayings kind of that are funny. Uh, here's my favorite so far. It's one of my favorites. It's always give 100% unless you're giving blood. I think that's cute and funny. And plus it also gives like a message, right? <laughs> And now, as each member arrives, right, I'm already there, and they expect me now to be there because I've been doing this for a while, I greet them with a broad smile, a hearty good morning, or some other fun greeting. Sometimes I have something fun to say, like, can you believe it? It's already Monday type thing. Uh, my goal for these actions is, I like it myself, but it's to give the team some energy, have everyone feel welcome, and signal that this meeting will be productive and fun. Now, I'm not the team leader, so I don't have to do this stuff. I mean, it's not required of me. Uh, the guy who is a team leader, uh, he's a wonderful leader, and I adore him. He's really good. He's funny, too, and he likes my antics. He likes that I'm doing this. Remember, this is a nuclear power facility, too, which, which makes it so unusual because some of the meetings are so, like, stern and reserved. But ours aren't. But we do our job. We get it done. So I'm not obligated to arrive early. I don't have to put things up on the board and other things I do. But I cherish my team, and I want the team to do good. That's why I do that. So you can do the same thing. You can uplift your team, too. Your style may differ from mine. Uh, I'm, I'm a little unusual outgoing and do silly stuff at times. So maybe that you don't have to do that. But by bringing your best attitude and as much natural enthusiasm as you can, your team will cherish you as a teammate.